Hey, hey, today we're going to turn a kid's toy into a film prop with a super simple 3D custom made part. Let's go! Hey, hey, how's it going? Anthony Ferraro here at Create Sci Fi. Well, today we're going to make a blaster. <laughs> Yes, another blaster. I love making blasters. Um, so, as you know, I just released the Star Wars fan film. So, during the past year, I bought a lot of stuff. And then this was like a kid's stormtrooper gun. And at one point, I bought this online uh, from a costume store or, or maybe even from someplace in China. Looked cool. But then sometimes online, I get it and it's it's tiny, right? It's It's like... It's like for a tiny little child. So I put that on the heap for later. Now it's later. So I have this, right? And it's, um, it's always happy accidents, right? Use every part of the buffalo. So I was thinking if I cut off this stock and then cut the bottom off here, it's actually pretty flat. And I was like, oh, if I just, I can custom print a 3D prop and make this a really cool handgun blaster so i thought it was a good opportunity to share with you how i make custom parts and it's really simple i use tinkercad right so tinkercad is like <laughs> it's like the child's programmer uh the child's program for for like cad right for for people that are doing like real 3d design this is like you know what you would probably use in like a elementary school classroom but for my purposes, when I'm, I'm downloading models and I just want to adjust them, or if I want to just build small little custom parts, it, it works perfect. But it's really simple, and I've showed that a few times in videos, but I've never gone over it. So I thought, you know what? So I am going to turn this into a blaster. You've seen me do that a bunch of times before. and We're going to do that. We're going to paint this and sand it. But instead of just spitting out the 3D part and saying, hey, I made this, I'm going to take you on a journey through Tinkercad because... You know, printing is becoming more and more affordable. I know like about a year or two ago, it was like, you know, I'm still gonna do other things, but printing is just too dang on good of a solution for what I do. And especially, you know, if you can imagine something and then create it instead of imagine something and then have to go shop and find something that maybe looks like it, it's pretty cool, it's pretty powerful. And I even, you know, my printer is like a thousand dollars, but I just bought like a two hundred dollar printer, which I think, you know, that's that's pretty reasonable. So I'm going to start printing with that, so I can share with you, and sort of, if you're already printing, maybe give you some ideas. And if you're kind of on the fence, I think it'll be a cool way to sort of give you that little nudge, right? So I'm going to design a, a part in Tinkercad, a new. Actually, I'm not even going to design it, right? I'll show you how you can design it. But what I'll do is uh, I'll go onto one of the sites, probably Mini Factory or Thingiverse, and find like a Star Wars type grip. And then I'll modify that, kit bash that, because for me, it's all about the kit bashing. And then modify it to this size so we can use it for this. And I, and I think that'll be fun. And again, you know, don't want this to go to waste, so this will be a fun, and it'll sort of have a Star Wars signature to it, but it won't obviously be the Stormtrooper, whichever blaster this is. I don't know which one this is. It doesn't say from which film. But um, yeah, so let's go into Tinkercad. I'll show you how to make that. And then once we print up that part, but this time I'll show you how I, I make it, and then we'll go ahead and turn this into a cool blaster from you know, this is like a one third scale for like a little child, but because it's supposed to be a rifle, it fits in the hand pretty good. It's just this grip is tiny. So yeah, I'm excited. And again, you know, it's all, it's all good. This was a mistake. I couldn't use it for my film, but wasn't going to throw it away. Right. So it's like a hundred degrees where I live. So let's go into the computer, into the air conditioning, and I'll show you how I use Tinkercad to make that part. Let's go. All right, let's go into my mini factory first, right? So there's a lot of great places you can get free 3D models. My mini factory, Thingiverse is a very popular one. And I just want to find a Star Wars style gun that I can take the handle from for a mashup, right? Don't want to reinvent the wheel. So now we're going to go into Tinkercad. 
So now in Tinkercad, I make a lot of little bits and bobs custom for my pieces here. Like here, this was for the Spotchka case, right? That I used in my Star Wars film. Just little things like there you see on the case, just little throwaway things, but it just adds value. And then this was a big thing for my sawed off shotgun style blaster rifle. I needed to squish this from the hero prop that we know from the films into something that could be for my, my handheld version. And I did this in Tinkercad. So here I just want to show you really basically how this works. Like I said, this is like, you know, this is like a elementary school, high school style um, interface, right? So here I'm just taking, a, you know, grabbing, it's all straightforward. I grab a cube from the side there. And then I'm making a hole here, right? So those ones with the lines across them, those are the negative space. Then you group that, you make a hole, and that's basically it. You're adding and subtracting very basic shapes, right? So here I know that the hand grip that I wanna replace on my toy is a certain dimension. I don't remember, I think it was like 90 millimeters by 35 millimeters, but I took that dimension and I put it exactly here in Tinkercad in the shape. So then I need a hand grip. So I measured my hands. And again, I think that was like around 90 millimeters, whatever it was. And I'm dragging it, right? It's just dragging in. It's all very intuitive, right? It's like playing with blocks. This is a free program. I don't think I mentioned that. This is 100% free. So you slide it around. And then there, because I put it on an angle, it dips out in the back, right? So nothing complicated. I just want to slice that off. Right, so you take the negative space shape, you put it there, and then in the top there is a group option, you group them, and it deletes it. So now I need a trigger. Okay, so that cylinder is trigger shaped, and you know, I don't wanna oversimplify this, but I don't wanna overcomplicate it. It's just basic shapes, and you're taking your mouse, and you're dragging, and you're dropping them, and that's it, right? So we're working in 3D space, so here, because I have that trigger guard fitted up the way I wanted it to. I have the excess of it hanging off. Again, select all, hit that group button up there, cuts it off. So now what I do is once I get close to where I want it, you know, you just select all and then you change the color of it. So now here is, there's a bunch of shapes and uh, sort of like little geometries that are just standard in here. Right, so this one I use a lot, and you'll probably notice it if you follow my channel. I use this in a, in a lot of props. It's like a heat sink vibe, right? So there I'm just giving the hand grip, just giving it a little texture, making it look real. And then here, again, in these pre-made shapes, there's like a knob. So what are these? These are greeblies, right? Just drag in, drop them. And again, not to oversimplify, but all I'm doing is looking for something, grabbing it, dragging it, resizing it, it's all very intuitive, right? So there is a custom handle that's made exactly for the size that I need to replace on my gun. And here I'm just, you know, adding a little shape just to give it a little more interest, just, just to kind of show you that you can, right? Then I export that as an STL and I'll be able to print that, right? And then there it is, there's that final piece. I mean, how long, you know, that took like 10 minutes. All right, so now on to now that you understand that, so here's the piece that I grabbed, and all I wanna do is use those same principles, and I'm gonna cut this down so that I know that it'll fit onto my gun. And that red block there, I have size to what I need to fill on my gun, and I'm just using that for a reference. And there's the piece right there. I just pulled it and modified it, mashed it up. I'm doing air quotes here. So now I bring it into my printing software, right position this on here put some supports going to export it to the printer and now i have a custom piece that's going to fit this children's toy that i want to modify into an adult size film prop so i print that out there it is i think that took two and a half three hours to print and now i have a custom piece for doing what we love to do is mash up and kit bash toys to make adult size props. <laughs> All right, so here, now we're in more familiar territory, right? So now I'm just cleaning up all the supports. I always start with uh, 
the emery stick, right? Work my way through the emery stick, sandpaper, steel wool, files, but it's always, you know, I'm always sneaking up on it. So I love my palm sander, right? So basically what this is, is it's a foam um, rubber palm size sander and it just accepts those sanding discs, the, the loophole ones that are usually for those um, electric sanders. So what I do is I go usually like 220 and then whenever you see me using the steel wool, all I'm doing with the steel wool is I'm always with prop making doing these sort of odd shaped things. So the steel wool just helps to make sure that I'm hitting areas that maybe I'm skipping over with the surface of the sandpaper, right? So now because we 3D printed, we wanna fill this with a filler uh, primer because it's thick and it's gonna fill those holes and kind of save us some uh, work at the end. So here's this child's toy, right? I, I was so excited to get this rifle and then when I got it, it was like 10th scale, it was tiny, right? So I get rid of the little magazine off there. And then here's this little tiny um, like gun stock that makes it the, the rifle. So I'm just gonna saw that right off because I figure once I put my hand where I'm gonna put the hand grip, that tail end like exhaust end will just come over the back of the hand and I think that's gonna work out nicely. So here I'm just filing this off, sanding it down. And now uh, the last bit of removal here is I'm just gonna get rid of uh, the hand grip, right? This tiny hand grip. And I'm just, you know, using the coping saw. You could use a Dremel tool. I just try to use whatever is the path of least resistance, right? And um, that all comes off pretty clean. And like I said, I was initially inspired to do this too because I just noticed that that area that I was gonna be removing is flat, right? It's not contoured. It's not all aerodynamic or ergo ergonomic. It's it's just flat. So I was like, okay, that's pretty easy. So now I'm going to 100 grit just because I want to hog out all this sort of rough and tumble that I just uh, took off with the coping saw. I'll smooth it out with some 220 in a little bit. But for now, I just want to get that uh, flat. And here, you know, we're manhandling this. We're, we're cutting stuff apart that doesn't, want to be cut apart so you know there's a little crack there so i just use some super glue now here is the universal greebly you guys know i love that so again an, this is very thematic here so uh on etsy i bought a bunch of sheets of these but they were way tinier than i expected so i couldn't use them but you know you put them in the box put them aside and then now it's like oh these will fit perfectly in this little void where I took out the magazine. Now I have to say at this point, sometimes you get lucky. Now, throughout the whole build of, of mashing up this blaster, everything fell together. You've seen plenty of my builds where it fights you the whole way, but this one, every turn, I was like, what am I gonna pull here? It's like, oh, I have these universal greeblies. This is perfect. The handle, so this, this one was really pleasant. <laughs> And, you know, it's not always that way. So you got to appreciate it when you can. And again, just using the kicker and the super glue, um, that just keeps the train rolling. And that's just the activator. I call it the kicker. It's just uh, an activator works with any super glue. All it does is it um, cures it instantly. That's all that is. It's nothing beyond that. All right. So now into my bits and bobs. These are all my little greeblies that I save. And like I said, this build just went along nicely. So I think, oh, maybe I'll put that on the back. And then I have, oh, here's some wheels from some dollar store airplane. Maybe that'll fit. And yeah, no, but like I said, that, and it's the exact size. <laughs> Trust me, that very rarely happens. So I'm enjoying it. And the whole rest of the build just kind of goes like that. So I, I was very pleased. So I really enjoyed myself on this one, right? So, you know, that's a wheel that could be an engine. Now I'm just, you know, corking up the back there. That's fine. I'm not going to overthink it. It fits good, right? Maybe me of five years ago would futz with that. Now I know better. It's like, okay, <laughs> you got a gift from the universe. Move on. So a little super glue, a little kicker, boom, it's coming along. So now we have all these holes. Typically on this channel, 
uh, I use Bondo. But again, I don't know, I'm just trying to give people other options. So with the 3D prints, when I have to fix them or fill holes, I use the, the plastic wood filler, right? So for this, this is like a little background gun. I don't imagine this as a hero weapon. So I'm just gonna use the plastic filler and I'm just gonna fill up those holes, right? Again, this is fine for the film prop. If this was a hero prop, if this was something that, you know, was gonna be for my main character in the movie or in the series, I would probably use Bondo. But I wanna give you guys options because Bondo is maybe not realistic for everybody. And then here, you know, once it's tacky and not 100% cured is when you could get in there and get rid of the bulk of the stuff so you don't have to sand everything off. So here I'm just cleaning it up. Um, sometimes making it more messy by cleaning it up <laughs> and what i like about this stuff too it's pink and then when it hardens it, it turns beige so you kind of can go away do other things and you know um when it's good to go so now i just have these emery sticks sanding sticks whatever you want to call them nail files really and i'm just cleaning it all up right got sandpaper emery palm sander and then at some point i'm sure i'm gonna crack out the steel wool and i'm not using here but also works good on this too would be like a scotch bright um, that's good for this kind of work as well so here i'm sanding it toothing it up uh the seams i probably could have done a better job on those seams if i'm being honest but you know it'll it'll be fine also, what I do, you've seen me do on this channel before, is I'll use super glue and baking soda, or you could use baby powder if you want to fill up seams. And then now I'm uh, going over it with the steel wool, because you see there's like a lot of finicky grooves and sort of contours, and I want to make sure those get cleaned up. So there, we're making progress. And now it's time for the marriage. We're gonna match together my favorite thing, match together two things that were not meant to be together to make a new thing. So what I'm doing here is because I'm uh, gonna epoxy this and we don't want it to snap off, we want a firm grip. What I'm doing is I'm just toothing this up. I'm making grooves and channels um, for the glue to seep into and, and lock, right? You don't, you don't wanna go smooth surface to smooth surface because it'll just eventually just click off so here i have plenty of little random grooves and cracks and crevices for the glue to sneak in hook under and you get a more positive grip so here i got the five minute epoxy that's two-part epoxy you can get the single use now i use it so much i like getting these um larger um tubes of it that way i always have it on hand but you could certainly just buy like a single use and it's two parts 50 50 50 of one 50 of the other and um mix that up and i always uh mix it up a little extra because <laughs> with this any kind of two-part thing this bondo if you get a soft part it just kind of messes everything up so here I'm just painting this on. I want to make sure that I cover the entire surface, right? Because this is a very important connection. Um, you know, you don't want to pull out your gun and have the one half of it go flying across the room. <laughs> Ask me why I use that specific example. <laughs> it could happen. <laughs> so now I'm just placing these together and they're you got to be careful because when they're also wet like this, I, I don't know what the science is, but they're going to want to slide all over apart from each other, right? I know with wood glue, some people use salt, but there I just use a little bit of tape because it's only five minutes and I'm just setting it there for it to uh, bond up. And there, now it's looking like a blaster. It doesn't look like a kid's rifle anymore. And I just really like the way the back end kicks out. Now this is a plastic primer. I wanted to try this. There's a lot of cool stuff in the automotive section. So this is meant to paint like plastic bumpers. So I thought maybe this will be better than just when I use my usual black um, all purpose primer. And so far so good, you know? I haven't had any, um, feeling with this that it 
was going to scratch off and it does feel a little sturdier. So now we're just doing a silver dry brush. This is sort of the generic silver dry brush that I like to do. Again, because I'm imagining this prop would probably be for a, a background player at some point. It does have a Star Wars uh, style silhouette. So if I ever wanted to use it for another Star Wars film, it's a great uh, background piece. But also too, um, if you're doing something just sci-fi, somebody in the background could certainly uh, use this and it would be very effective. So I did a silver dry brush there and now I'm just taking a little bit of rub and buff just to hit high points, edges, things that I want to seem, uh, you know, you in the real world, you're saying, oh, the paint stripped off. The smoke and mirrors is you're just kind of giving people the illusion that this is a piece of metal. Now, remember, just a few minutes ago, this was white and orange plastic. So you see that the rub and buff is very effective in selling this, right, as a piece of metal, a prop. And I always say you're never going to see it presented like that. It's going to be whipping around in somebody's hand. So now we start our clear coats, right? So I always, between each of these processes, you put the clear coat so you don't make mud. Because now we're going to weather it. And I don't want that dry brush and that um, sort of rub and buff to have a chance to get rubbed around or, or mixed up with this layer I'm doing now. So you put a coat of clear between everything. So here's the oil-based... Um, uh, 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 the, the water-based oil paints, sorry. And um, I like to use these for weathering, right? I've tried a lot of different things. So far, these are what I use now because I like when I don't dilute them, I really like um, the, the sort of greasiness of them that I'm able to achieve. You can also use acrylic. I used acrylic a lot. And it's typically you're using uh, burnt umber and black. Right, so burnt umber gives you that sort of rust patina, and then the black wash, um, it gets into the crevices and really gives it an aged uh, life uh, about the piece that really works. And like I said, I'm always, you know, I've been using these water-based oil paints for a long time now, but I don't know, you know, next year something else could be what I use. Uh, you know, two or three years ago, I was always using the acrylic paints. It's always changing. So it's whatever works for you, you know? So here I'm just going through and this is what I like to do is just sort of put the grease in there. Like I think of it as grease and that's the undiluted um, oil paint. Again, water-based because oil paint would, would never dry. Even these water-based ones take a while to dry, but so be it it looks good so here i'm just taking gold what i like to do is just take some random colors just to break it up again this is more of a film thing than it is a prop and costume thing what will happen is um on film these little bits of gold or you know sometimes i put a little red or purple really tiny minuscule bits of it but it does do something it just sort of just breaks it up gives it a little bit of life and there yeah and that's looking good that really looks like something so now the final sort of pass is you know i just want to dry this all off i will hit it with another coat of uh a matte clear but yeah yeah that's really starting to to come to life so now uh i'm just gonna do some dusting i like to use my powders now you can just use one or the other or none of these, if you like the clean look. This is just, I don't know, it's just my process, right? I like, what I like about this is I feel the paints give it a grease and rust look. And for me, the powders give it a, it's just been hanging out in the world for a really long time, right? It's more earth, right? It's more like, okay, this this thing is gets a lot of use, right? Like you're, your car can be clean, but if you if you really look close at the wheels, you know it's something that is utility, uh, a utility that's in the outdoors. You know it just is, and I just like the sort of mat that the dust gives. And then I take some black, just put a little here, a little there, and all these processes. So much of it is put on to be removed, right? But there's something to it. There's something valuable that remains and makes it worth doing. 
So now back to my sort of random color pops. I like to put a little bit of blue and the blue to me, I tend to want to put it in places where I have a sort of heavy dry brush where it's a lot of silver coming through. Cause just that little bit of blue to me really sells the metallic. And again, same thing, you know, I'm gonna go over this with a brush that's gonna get handheld. This this will not get sealed in. So at a certain point, you know, just by handling the prop in the world, it, it'll take on a life. And then finally, some silver rub and buff to just um, make a few things pop that might have gotten dampened down by all the processes we just did with the weathering and the powders, right? And you know, I'm a broken record. If you follow this channel, I say this all the time, you gotta be careful with the rub and buff. It's worth it to take that chance <laughs> because it really takes it to the next level. But you can, you, you see how my hands all shaking and going very deliberately. You can really blow the whole thing. But there, yeah, yeah, this came out really good. I re I'm really digging this. So let's go check out some beauty shots of this, right? So there it is. Looks like a piece of metal. Details. There's those universal greeblies. They're, they're a little magic. And there, you know, I'm seeing like those little bits of blue, little bits of gold. They really sell it. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Yeah, really happy with that. And especially happy when it's sort of unintentional, right? It's like I was deep into the Star Wars fan film, bought this one gun, didn't work, but kept it. Little 3D printing. And then, yeah, something really cool. Very happy with that. And, you know, I'm hoping that you guys will eventually be open to more 3D printing. Like I said, I've found like a $200 print printer that I'm gonna start working with. Uh, it's just such a great tool, right? And I, and I wanna share it. So, very happy with that. Hopefully the uh, Tinkercad really opened up possibilities for you. I guess the only thing to do right now is fire it up. All right. Mando back there is very cautiously watching. I guess. Oh, okay. <laughs> One more. Let's see. Shoot that bucket of paint over there. <laughs> well, as always, I hope that you found this video useful. Please like. Share, subscribe, leave a comment. Love to read the comments and check out the merch shop. We got bucket hats because I love bucket hats. I love black. Not everybody loves black. Lots of other colors in there. Check it out. T-shirts, hats, buying that really helps me to make these videos. Speaking of these videos, remember, I'm just here to help make sci-fi. <laughs>